What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Down Once More. Matt here, and it is mini episode week. We're coming off of Brad and I's review of Waitress the Musical, uh, which was kind of just elaborating on what my mini review of it had been, uh, the filmed recording of Waitress the Musical. And so go check out that episode if you haven't already. We had a lot of fun with it, uh, talking about Sarah Bareilles' role in it. And I do want to call out something that both of us had missed and did not discuss, um, although I do have inklings that Brad was aware of this, and that is that Joe Tippett, who played Earl in the filmed Waitress Broadway recording, is actually engaged to Sarah Bareilles uh, in real life. Uh, he's her fiance. They may be married at this point, uh, but at the time the movie released, he was her fiance. So I think that could be why Brad had some hostility towards his role in that. I'm not quite sure, uh, but due to his pro, um, self-proclaimed love for Sarah Bareilles and her being an angel, that would track. So um, slap on the wrist for us for missing that in our review of it, but there's a fun tidbit for you. One other thing I want to call out on here, uh, this is going to be a grab bag of an episode and uh, culminating, and I will be reviewing a mystery movie that I saw, and I'll go into that a little bit later. But I started watching Seinfeld for the first time ever. I'm, I'm getting in on these shows that are critically acclaimed and everyone loves uh, that I just never got around to watching. So I'm working through Sopranos. I'm on the final season of that. And then I started Seinfeld after I finished a rewatch of The Office. Starting out, I will say, initial blush was, I don't quite see the hype. Don't come at me yet. I have come around on it a little more. Part of it is because, in my opinion, the stand-up comedy bits are the weakest parts of every episode. Um, there hasn't really been one that's really hit for me and really got me. It could be because some of it's dated. It could just be the style of the humor. Not for me. But the show itself... George, Elaine, Jerry, Kramer, all their interactions together, uh, putting aside Michael Richards' uh, problematic personal life, uh, regrettable statements he made there, uh, their interactions, the show itself, I have come around on. I'm loving it. So watching a few episodes every night. And one thing that I have enjoyed and picking out there is the musical notes on it. This is a musical podcast. And so in episode uh, season two and episode three, there's a part where George just keeps singing master of the house from Les Mis. And so that's a plot point in that episode. I thought that was great. And then there's one in the end of season three, um, where, there and I won't spoil anything for people who are behind on this 30 year old show but George is whistling if I were a rich man from uh, Fiddler on the Roof so we're having lots of musical references in there which makes sense they're in New York they're close to Broadway got lots of fun stuff going on there so I thought that was really neat as I'm watching through this just kind of seeing those nods and those moments in there uh, something else Tires is out on Netflix now. It came out the 23rd. It's uh, Shangulis' show uh, that just got picked up. It's already got renewed for a season two. And it's a lot of fun. It's just kind of a little bit of a raunchy comedy. It takes place in a tire shop. Six episodes. Really quick binge. Entertaining. A lot of comedians in it. You can tell it's just a bunch of friends having fun shooting a series, which I feel like always comes through in comedies especially. And you can just tell when it's people who enjoy working together, being around each other, and just shooting the shit and having fun. That's what I feel like is one of the reasons why Always Sunny is so successful, which is probably my peak sitcom of all time, uh, is Always Sunny. And I feel like that's what's so great there. And that's what comes through in Tires, too. So I'm excited for season two. I'm guessing it'll be a while. We'll have to wait for that. It's a lot of active comics. They got a lot going on. And so, unless they've already filmed it, but be watching for that. I encourage you, go check out Tires on Netflix. Things like that. Apparently, what Netflix tracks is a lot of those, those first week streaming numbers or what encourage if it gets a second season. Netflix is notorious for canceling shows after one season, not really giving them some room to breathe, and just now just pumping out so much stuff that things can get buried and lost so easily. 
So it's important if there's a show that's original and creative and people enjoy, get out there, watch it, tell your friends, watch it as quickly as possible, um, which kind of sucks that that's how it's tracked and that's what they do there. But then they got to keep that going so they can give out all these ridiculously inflated movie streaming numbers. Um, like the Netflix CEO just recently said that he thought Barbie and Oppenheimer would have been just as successful if they released on Netflix instead of theaters. So just a wild statement to make. Speaking of theaters, there is a lot of discourse on film Twitter this past weekend because um, the movie of The Fall Guy starring Ryan Gosling and um, Emma, nope, Emily Blunt, Emily Blunt, Emily Blunt, um, opened, released on digital this past week after just a little over two weeks of being in theaters, 17 days of being in theaters. And it was critically well received audience received it. Well, it had a less than stellar box office, but part of that I think is yes. Movies have gotten a little more expensive when you go see them in the theaters, but I think a big part of it is since COVID, we have been like programmed to think movies are coming out on digital faster than they ever did before. Before, I remember if you didn't see the movie in theaters, you were waiting six months or more before it came out on video and you had a chance to rent it or buy it and check it out. Now we're getting weeks, like a month, maybe two, maybe three max before they're releasing on digital, which don't get me wrong, as someone who doesn't always get a chance to go to the theaters and see these, it's great. I love not having to wait as long to see things come out, but it has to be impacting the box office of these movies. And I feel like instead of getting a, hey, maybe we give these room to breathe in theaters, instead of that being the message that's going to the studio execs, they're thinking these original movies, these types of movies aren't worth making anymore, and we are better off just pushing them to streaming, which is just a ridiculous take, and I hope it's not the case. But like I said, that was discourse around the fall guy, and then Furiosa just opened in theaters, which was a prequel to Mad Max Fury Road. Uh, starring Anya Taylor-Joy, Chris Hemsworth. That opened this past weekend with a less than stellar box office as well. I think there's a couple things at play there. I think that it could be, it was at, here, a beautiful weather. It's Memorial Day weekend. A lot of times Memorial Day movies have a larger box office. It's a holiday weekend. You get more money in there. But you also have people out doing more things, traveling, spending time with family. You also have, it's an R-rated movie. The Mad Max movies, I feel like, are ones that I have to be in the right mood to watch them. They're very unique. There's not a ton of dialogue to them. The action is always fantastic. George Miller always shoots them beautifully. Like, Fury Road was fantastic, but they're not for everyone to go see in theaters. So I'm not super surprised that it kind of underperformed at the box office. I feel like a lot of people also have negative connotations in their head with prequels. But like I said, audiences are now getting trained to watch it at home. And I feel like the movie theater etiquette has gone downhill like crazy lately. Like I almost every movie that I've gone to, there have been people talking, people on their phones, just people overall just disrespectful um, in the theater setting. I'm all for if it's entertaining, laughing, being loud with it, and things like that, um, and just enjoying it. I don't want to hear your private conversations, though, during the movie. Um, another thing that hurts it, a lot of theater chains will do discounted showings at certain weeks, times of the day. So my theater, for example, we have Marcus Theaters is the chain that we have. They do value Tuesdays. So movies are six bucks on Tuesdays, unless it's in like the ultra screen, which is their like dumbed down closer version of IMAX, like as close to IMAX as you can get in the movie theater, um, without it being IMAX or so Dolby vision. And so those are six bucks for the showings there. And so a lot of people like I'm guilty of it too. I get tickets for the Tuesday after it opens. Um, so I can save like 10 bucks 
uh, for the movies. Like I recently got tickets for Deadpool and Wolverine, whatever the actual title is for that, for its Thursday night opening. So the day before, so July 25th, because there's certain movies I want to see as soon as they come out. I don't want to get spoiled. Um, and I'm just more excited about them. I'm a nerd at heart, so I enjoy those Marvel, the DC movies. A lot of times I try to see them opening night or as close to it as I can. There's good and bad with that. The bad part is you usually have packed, sold out theaters. And so then you get the worst of that theater etiquette. But you can avoid spoilers because I have zero self-control when it comes to scrolling on social media. And so if there's something, I'm going to look at it. I'm going to get spoiled. I'm still going to enjoy it. But it probably hit me differently if it was a surprise. And that's something I do to myself. But the tickets for that were 17 bucks a ticket. I think. And so, yeah, it's more expensive. It's not awful, but if you wait two, like three weeks, a month, you you can buy that movie on digital for 20 bucks, 25 bucks. So for the price of two movie theater tickets, if I wait a month, I can own it. Now I'm big on action movies. Ones with special effects are ones that I want to see in theaters. I want that surround sound. I want that big screen experience. So I would still go see this in theaters regardless. But a lot of times, the smaller ones like comedies or dramas, even if it's ones I'm really interested in, I wait. And so I know I'm part of the problem when it comes to um, movies not performing at the box office and original ones not getting a fair shake. And that's fair. But I think we're getting where it is going to be dangerous for movie theaters. We're going to see more of them start to shut down. And another thing I saw on film Twitter, people were... Uh, commenting about people complaining about movie theater prices like, well, have they not heard of AMC stubs or these different programs where you can get discounted movies? Not everyone has an AMC. Uh, Marcus Theaters does have a discounted program that you can do, but I add some extra steps, not the most user-friendly experience to work through. And so I get why not everyone does that too. And also, if you're doing those programs, it's still not feeding into a larger box office opening because you're getting discounted or cheaper tickets. Um, So I think studio execs just need to learn to take a step back and look at what they're putting out, look at what the target market of the audience is and figure out what the best method is for that and keep doing creative things, keep doing original things. You just need to, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a studio exec. I'm not going to comment anymore because I don't know. But I don't want to see movie theaters die because I do love the theater going experience. But I think people need to stop being disrespectful. Like the amount of videos I see on social media of people filming things in the theater, like trying to get videos of a big scene or a moment is just insane. You should not be on your phone doing a move during a movie. Like a borderline need to have you do what they do at comedy shows and lock up your phone so you're not screening it in there and so I know that would just cause less people to want to go but man I want to have an experience where it's people together put the phones away watch what's on the screen have a good time experience some movie magic together let's get back to that so uh last thing is like I said Marcus theaters are the theaters I have near me They've started doing recently, the past couple months, where they will do a Monday mystery movie. So what it is, is it is a movie that has not been released yet. You don't know what it is. All you know is the movie rating. And it is the on a Monday. And it is five bucks for a ticket. So cheap tickets. So you're taking a gamble because you don't know what you're going to see. But you know it's a movie that hasn't been released yet. So you're getting to see it before almost anybody else. And it's one time. So I wasn't able to do the first two showings partially because Monday night's a big editing night for me because a lot of times I'll record over the weekend. And so then I have Monday and Tuesday to edit the podcast to get it uploaded for Wednesday. Um, And they were both R-rated movies and not knowing what we were going into. Wife wasn't into it. She doesn't do the violent stuff as much. And so where you like, you don't even know why it's rated R. You just know it is rated R. So um, this week was a PG-13 movie. So I'm like, you know what? It's Memorial Day. I'll do the podcast Tuesday night. Talk about it. Let's go see what this is all about. So totally against the spirit of it. I did some research. I'm like, okay, I want to figure out what PG-13 movies are coming up. 
Uh, so I can kind of know a little bit what I'm walking into and be a little bit curious. And I don't know if I would do that in the future, that being said. And so I look, the two PG-13 movies that were coming up in the next few weeks is Summer Camp, which opens this Friday. And it stars Diane Keaton, Kathy Bates, Alfred Woodard. And then The Watchers, which is the one produced by M. Night uh, Shyamalan with Dakota Fanning. And I was thinking, okay, I looked at what the previous... This is like I'm doing all this deductation, trying to figure out what movie we're going to go see. Like I said, probably against the spirit of it, but I'm curious and impatient. Like I've said, no self-control for these things. And the previous mystery movies were Boy Kills World, which is a like smaller like indie film, not like a big studio film, um, with Bill Skarsgård. And then the next one was Babes, which was a comedy with, um, oh, who was in it? Rena Glazer. I don't think that's her name. I think I'm butchering it. But she's from uh, Broad City, which I never watched. Um, but it is, no, I'm just not completely off. It's not, no, it is Alana Glazer. I was so close. So close. Um and so those were the two, which is also like not a big studio one. So my money was on we were gonna see summer camp. And so get to the theater. Um, lo and behold, it was summer camp. Uh I was also clued in when the trailer started running and was for a bunch of small studio movies, um, and kind of ones that you hadn't heard of before. So I'm like, oh yeah, this is definitely summer camp. Nothing was horror, nothing was violent. And so I'm like, yep, we're about to see Summer Camp. So, but I'm like, okay, this isn't a movie I would see normally, but it was five bucks. It's an experience. I will say, I saw a preview for a movie I had not heard of or seen a preview before, which was Firebrand, which stars Alicia Vikander and Jude Law with some insane makeup prosthetics that he doesn't even look like himself. Um, and Firebrand is a movie about Catherine Parr, who is the sixth wife of King Henry VIII, um, who had killed his five previous wives, which is what the musical Six is based on. So it ties, it ties all together. But that movie opens in June, and it actually looks really good from the trailer. So I am intrigued by that. Um, and that's coming up. So, so summer camp, I'm just set the stage for you is a movie, which Diane Keaton has been doing a lot of movies in this genre, which seems like, are just kind of comedies, drama, rom-com mashups with almost exclusively older actors in it. So they have a very specific target audience demographic like Diane Keaton. She's been at the book club series uh, is one that comes to mind like this. Um, but this movie has, it, it opens with some flashbacks with Kathy Bates, Alfred Woodard and Diane Keaton's characters as tweens at the summer camp and how they met each other. They were talking about how great this is. And then it says 50 years later, Anytime you're doing a time jump that is 50 years later, I am in the mindset that I am not the target audience for this movie. But what ensued was a movie that had some heart. Was it predictable? Insanely so. Was it cheesy? Insanely so. Um, was there some moments of good acting? Yes, Kathy Bates is fantastic. Kathy Bates is fantastic in Misery. Kathy Bates is fantastic in American Horror Story and in The Office as Joe Bennett. So, Office rewatch there. So that was nice to see her pop up. Diane Keaton, also a fantastic actress. And Annie Hall, Father of the Bride movies. She's in the Godfather movies too. Fun fact, if you didn't know that, nice young um Diane Keaton in there. Then Alfred Woodard is also a fantastic actress who actually got her start off Broadway in the 70s. Um, she was in 12 Years a Slave, Luke Cage, Desperate Housewives, a number of other things. And then you have, on the male side, who have very minor roles, you have Dennis Haysbert, who most people will probably recognize from the Allstate commercials with his very deep voice. Allstate, 
are you in good hands? That was a very bad um, Dennis Haysbert impression. But he was also the president in 24, one of my favorite shows of all time. And then Eugene Levy's in it from Schitt's Creek. So, oh, and it also does have Beverly D'Angelo, who played Ellen Griswold in the Vacation movies. And I was first introduced to her from Entourage, where she plays Barbara Miller in a few of the later seasons of that. So it has some recognizable people in it. Um, Besides the three main leads, uh, Eugene Levy's probably next up there. And then you have the only young people in this movie, besides the flashback, are played by Nicole Richie, Josh Peck, and then um, Betsy Sidero, who I was not familiar with, but was in one of the most over-the-top roles and slapsticky, just, I don't know what she was trying to play, but she was just seemed so wild and out of place in this movie. Um, and then what ensued in this movie was a story of friendship, about putting yourself out there, being vulnerable with each other. Um, and it all culminated in about a two out of five movie for me. Um, not great, not the target audience, had some great acting performances. Um, it did not get many laughs. Uh, there was, I will say, there was a group of about four people who were definitely the target audience for this movie who were laughing their asses off the whole time. So I think this movie is perfect for who it is meant for. That's like some of the kids' movies when we talk about those, review those. I'm like, I didn't love it. But I am not who this was movie movie was for, and I get that, and I respect that. So this movie knows what it is for. I anticipate it will have an absolutely awful box office performance. Um, this seems like one that was like made for streaming. Like that's the kind of movie it seemed like. Like this isn't a big gather family go out and see this in theaters because it wasn't it wasn't family friendly enough that it's like you bring your kids to go see this. Like it's, they're like, why am I watching this movie about grandparents? That's kids aren't going to be entertained by that. They're not going to love that. Um, that being said, some of the soundtrack choices in this, I felt like they did not know who their target target audience was. Um, just some wild things. The, all the, the pretty girls walk like this. Um, this is the widest I've sounded saying a song title, but just some other things that were pulled in there that just did not seem fitting for what it was. Um, there's of course some bad special effects in it. Some things that are just not plausible. Uh, Diane, uh, not Diane Keaton, uh, Kathy Bates's character. She plays Jenny moon who became a motivational speaker uh, and get your shit together was her saying, which very original, but she drives this big like RV with get your shit together plastered on it. Her book cover says, get your shit together. Um, and I feel like if we've seen things, popular books in bookstores, you can't have just an expletive on the front cover. You have to have like the eye as an exclamation mark or something like that. You can't just have shit on the front page out there for all the children to see. It's frowned upon. But there was enough um, sex humor, vibrator humor. It opens up with a girl getting her period and um, a whole thing about that for about five minutes. Which is fine, but like kids aren't going to be vibing with it. Um, so not really a family film. It is for, I would say, their main demographic. You're going to be looking at people probably 50 to 70, which could be great theater goers. But here's the thing with how expensive movies have gotten, which now I sound like an old person. Um, I'm not going to be going to the theaters as much or they're going to be going when it's cheap. And it's not going to sustain with new movies coming out and opening up some bigger ones that need those screens. It's not going to sustain that. The only thing I will say, there's not really any big movies coming out the next few weeks um, that spring to mind that I think are going to be vying for those those screens. We have a little bit of a lull here. Um, I also could just be completely wrong because I did ex- absolutely zero uh, research before making that statement. And so let's see what movies are coming out soon. Um, Oh, yes. Bad Boys, Ride or Die comes out 
June 7th. This is a movie that I feel like has not been marketed like at all. And I thought Bad Boys for Life was surprisingly good and I loved it. But that comes out June 7th, so that'll snag some screens. That one, The Watchers, I thought I may be about to see here. That also comes out June 7th. Um, until that, we don't really have anything after that. Ah, June 9th, the Lord of the Rings movie. June 8th, 9th, and 10th, the Lord of the Rings extended versions are showing in theaters. I completely forgot about that, that those are getting re-released. Um, so I might have to check those out. And then, why does this list on Fandango and not Fandango, Rotten Tomatoes, end at June 14th? Um, it's a lame list. What's coming soon faster, later than that? But, I don't know. We got a bit of a break. Nothing super hot and heavy. Uh, I am excited for the new Bad Boys movie, so I will be seeing that in theaters most likely. Uh, all my friends I went to movies with have now moved either out of town or out of the state. So, that's a problem. However, I think going to the theater by yourself is underrated. Because I'm going there to sit and watch a movie. It is nice to have someone to talk about the movie to talk about the movie with afterwards. But during the movie, I don't want you talking to me anyways. I just want to sit, in silence, watch the movie, enjoy it, have a good time. So there's no shame in going to the movies by yourself. Watching a movie is a solo experience. But if you have friends you can bring with you, talk about it afterwards. Do not talk about it during the movie. Shut the fuck up during the movie. Enjoy it and then move on with your life and enjoy it afterwards. Have a beer. Have some dinner. Have some whatever after your movie. Have some ice cream. Go out for dessert. Let's normalize that. You have a beer before the movie. You see the movie. And then you go get dessert with the fellas, with the homies afterwards. Let's do that. That's new. New thing going on. Um, drink, movie, and dessert. That doesn't have a ring to it. Um, this was a very unproductive episode, so I apologize for it. I had company staying with me um, from Thursday night till Monday morning, which was great. Got to catch up with some, some friends, had not seen in a long time. Uh, they now have a five-month baby who also stayed with us adorable baby who actually behaved himself very well, even though he's getting his first tooth coming in while he's here. So, um, but that being said, it was a busy weekend. Um, I'm now in management at work, so I am working longer, more hours, all that fun stuff. Uh, I've got more conferences, meetings, crazy stuff there. So life has been busy. I was not as prepared that's something I will take on myself because I always want to be putting out the best thing for you, the listeners. I want to have something you enjoy. Um, the plan is for Brad to join me for an episode next week, so stay tuned for that. Things may get pushed because he has been traveling, and like I said, things are crazy. But in two weeks, on June 8th, I will be going to my very first AEW wrestling show. I'm going to an AEW collision taping out in Council, Council Bluffs. It's the first time they've been close enough um, for me to be able to go see it. This past weekend was AEW Double or Nothing, which I did not get to watch, but I have, and I am slowly working my way through it. I've only gotten about an hour into it, and it's like four hours long, five hours long. Um, so... I am excited to finally get to watch that. I am excited to go see my first AEW show because I have been into pro wrestling since 2020. And so I am a very new pro wrestling fan. A lot of people grew up on it. I've talked about it on here a few times. I just think, yes, it is planned, pre-planned, scripted, but all TV shows are, well, most TV shows are, and this, you get some fantastic athleticism with it, and it is just fun and a good time if you just let yourself be in the moment, appreciate what those wrestlers are doing, putting their bodies on the line for your entertainment, and you will have a damn good time. So I'm excited to go to that show. Got a buddy going to that with me. Uh, ben, he was went to 
two WWE shows with me that I've gone to. So it is going to be a fun time. And I will be talking about that on the podcast as well, because I know all you musical theater fans are also giant professional wrestling fans. So I'm making those two meet. Um, We haven't really had a podcast before that tackles both um, the musical theater world and the wrestling world. So that's what we're going to be doing here on down once more in a couple weeks. So thank you all for watching, listening, subscribing, following, sharing, commenting. These are all things you should be doing. Thank you for doing all of those things. Thank you for your continued support. Keep sending us ideas, suggestions. We're going to be doing a Disney movie review this month um, as our suggestion that came in. We'll see if I start getting more influx of things. Maybe I'll throw another giveaway out there. So stay tuned. Always watch, listen, comment, follow, subscribe, share. Tune in to our socials, which by our socials, I mean Instagram. The Twitter is dead. Um, But Facebook page, essentially the same as Instagram. But if you only do one or the other, follow there. Head to our link tree. Follow us at Down Once More Pod on everything. Out at Down Once More Pod on Instagram, on YouTube. You can find us uh, youtube.com slash at Down Once More Pod. So check us out. You got a backlog. We're getting close to 100 episodes soon. I don't know exactly what we're at now, but we're getting there. So we'll try to blow something out for that episode, potentially uh, plan something a little bit unique. But thank you all. Have a great June. We're closing out May with this. So sorry about that. But June is my birthday month. We're going to have some fun with it. And as always, don't forget to go down once more. Later.